in Christianity today, you don't need to force anybody to be a Christian. We don't beat people to be Christians. If you change your mind that you are not going to be a Christian again, nobody will force you. We don't kill people. We don't marginalize people. We don't imprison people. You know why? There is an agent that is mobilized to convict the heart of men. And so our duty is just to tell them, do you know how this, this message does not even sound appealing? But when it is preached, as simple as it is, you will see that the Holy Ghost goes to work and convicts men. And the level of conviction you will see in the hearts of people is as potent as it was with the very first. It doesn't diminish. There is no threat anywhere that you will die if you change your mind. And there is no special promise anywhere that if you don't believe this will happen. Yet, people are so convicted across the nations. And this conviction is not just a zeal hoping for something to happen in the future. It's a conviction that the moment you believe in it can begin to impact your life positively from the day you believed. Ranging from transformation, victory over sin, healing over sickness, and a lot of supernatural things happening. Just like every one of you listening to me here. How many of you were coerced to believe in Jesus? You were forced. How many of you have been threatened now that if you stop believing in Jesus, you will die? Why are you believing? There is a force beyond your mind that is regulating your belief system. So it is, there is freedom and there is liberty because we know that the agent and the agency of conviction is the Holy Spirit. Jesus was speaking in John 16 verse 13 and he said, when I depart from you, he said, I will pray the Father and he will send another comforter. And this is what he said. He said, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. He said he will not speak of himself. He said what he has seen about me, that's what he will share with you. And true to his words, in Acts 2.37, the Bible said, when Peter finished preaching and they heard him, he said their hearts, that's where Christianity began from. That's why the Bible said with the heart man believes. He said their hearts were pricked and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? to be saved so there is a spiritual force that works with us there is a spiritual personality that works with us that convicts our hearer that is why we don't labor so much to be so scholastic in our delivery that's why we don't threaten anybody to believe we just share the truth of the word and the holy ghost goes to work and just as three thousand were convicted here in Acts chapter 2, that conviction continues till this day. And so the conviction of the Holy Spirit, which is an experiential reality, is a proof that this man did not just die. He actually rose as he said, because he said, another will come who will bear the truth. In fact, at, there was another point where Jesus was speaking, and he said, when the spirit of truth is come, he said he will convict the world of sin. It is that conviction that is still going on when we preach the gospel. The third proof of the resurrection are signs and wonders. Jesus was speaking in Mark 16, 17. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name shall they cast out devils. He said they shall speak with new tongues. If you go to verse 18, he kept giving many, many of such signs. So you will notice that one of the insurance of a Christian is his faith in the resurrection. The more you believe in the resurrection, the more you see supernatural signs manifesting in your life. And I'm not preaching to you what I read in the book. I've traveled around the world. And I have seen this thing happen with those who are professing Christians and those who are not Christians. When I went to Pakistan to preach, they didn't tell them anything about Jesus. They didn't tell them anything about Christianity. They just told them a healer is coming. And I didn't know. When I was coming into the meeting, I saw over 50 buses packed. And I said, where are all these people coming from? They said they brought them from different villages. Why did they turn up so much? They said, no, they told him a healer is coming. I said, I thought you told me you are looking for revival. 
when did the message turn to a healer is coming <laughs> when i came there to make things worse they were not speaking english so i had to reduce my message to a message that a six-year-old can understand and all i told them is man fell into sin and the only thing available to man was judgment for the wages of sin is death and there's nothing you can do about your sins because the standard of god is not the standard of man the standard of god is always 100 percent it's not that when you do good and your good supersede your evil you will go to heaven that's a joke if i bake cake now and i give you to eat and you want to eat i say hey sorry i put some animal dung the feces of my cow i put very little inside but i mean the the floor in the in, in inside is more than the dung you, you will now eat and say they small that's not how it works so the standard of god does not tolerate the the, the least impurity that's how god works if i give you water now and i say uh, uh, you can drink but uh, don't worry i put a uh, formaldehyde i call a chemical that can kill you i say i put some there but don't worry just drink the water is much will you drink and you say the, the quantity is small if you understand the danger of little impurity how do you think the god that the bible said his eyes cannot behold iniquity will now look your life and weigh you and say your good supersede your evil that's not how god works god's standard is perfect and completely perfect and so when god saw that we fell god sent us a savior and the price for sin is death that was why the savior died and so when he died everyone who believes his labor is accredited to that person just like if i'm owing you a thousand dollars and somebody shows up i can't pay and he says i've paid for you or he has paid for me if i accept that payment then i am free of that debt not because i paid but because somebody who had capacity paid and paid completely that was what jesus came to do for us and when he resurrected is a proof that when we die there's hope of all the men that are believed in and worship on earth not one of them said there was hope after life only jesus said i will die and i will rise again there's no other religious leader that said he will die with precision and say he will rise again so every of them is hoping for whatever they see in eternity only jesus said i will rise again and he didn't just say i will rise again he said, when I go to the Father, I will prepare a place for you. So he spoke about eternity with precision and audacity. And the way he validated it is that if you believe it, it's not until you come over right here while you are here, signs and wonders will begin to follow you as a proof that what I told you is not a lie. It can be justified. Are you seeing that? So when Christians go out and they see signs and wonders, is a proof that the resurrection is not a lie. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And so I preached that message to them in Pakistan. When I finished, I didn't sense any anointing. I told myself, you are finished today. I now went back and the people were waiting for the healer. That's the first message they want to hear. When I saw that nothing was working, I said, okay, stand up. If you are sick, stand up. This is your time. And trust me, there are sick people in the world i said in the name of jesus be healed and the holy ghost went to work i was not feeling anything but the holy ghost was working terrible things a woman shouted and said she can see she was blind they led her to the meeting eyes open another one shouted that she can hear the people were trying to understand then they started bringing babies babies who didn't even hear the message babies that didn't even have faith the other one there was the bone was protruded with a swollen on the chest the bone went back and the swollen vanished that was when everybody started shouting when i saw that jesus was doing his work the next one i went for when i finished teaching i said no this thing i'm telling you you would think i came with magic no i now caught somebody i said come i say you to give command in the name of jesus the guy gave command and healing started taking place that was how pakistan erupted we are not believing what is written in the textbook in christianity what we believe we can demonstrate if not that all of you are christians here i would have said somebody who has a challenge will come and i would have prayed for the person to be healed now 
so that you know this is not textbook i'm not trying to defend the bible i'm not trying to defend the document christianity is something that you experience that's why it brings liberty i'm not trying to prove or defend what jesus said or what the prophet said i can prove it and the way i prove it is that signs and wonders will follow when you talk and something happens somebody will know that there's a spirit behind what you are saying so that's the second sign of the resurrection in acts chapter 3 from verse 6 and 8 peter and john were going to the place of prayer and the bible said they saw an impotent man and the man asked them for help and peter said look on us he said silver and gold have i known he said such as i have i give you and in verse 6 he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk and he put the man up and the man started walking this is not defending a book this is demonstrating the truth of the word of god that this thing we believe is a reality it's a life it's not just a hope it's something we can demonstrate so if you believe in the resurrection the proof is the signs and the wonders and these signs and wonders are not for apostles and prophets it said these signs will follow everyone that believe